Lisa Lasecki. I'm the head of PR for both Regent Seven Seas and Oceana Cruises. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce to you all today Jason Montague, who is our president and COO, who's going to take you through some very exciting developments uh, at Regent. So, Jason. Thank you, Jason, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for coming out today. When we originally set this date, I didn't realize the same date as the Florida primaries. Um, so it made me reflect on how truly lucky we are to work in the travel industry. You know, every single day, day in and day out, we try to make a positive impact in our guest lives and give them enriching and rewarding experiences. Polar opposite of what's going on in the uh, political scene these days. So there'll be no mudslinging. No protests, hopefully, although my executive vice president of sales, Randall Sawyer, is sitting back there, so we've got to watch out for him, but uh, we're excited to be here today. And we do have some exciting news to share with you on Regent Seven Seas Cruises. So Regent is the world's most inclusive luxury vacation offering, and in just 120 days from today, we're going to be taking delivery of our newest ship, the Seven Seas Explorer, a ship that is destined to be the most luxurious ship ever <coughs> built. At 56,000 gross registered tons, and only 750 guests, Explorer boasts among the highest space ratios, the lowest staff to guest ratios, and the largest verandas at sea. And these are some of the key true measures of luxury in the cruise space today. But what really sets this ship apart is the extreme level of craftsmanship and lavish detail found throughout the entire ship. Now guests will experience this grandeur immediately when they walk onto the main atrium lobby, which we have pictured here, and they'll see the intricate level of detail in the exquisite stones, and other luxurious finishings that are found in every suite in every state in every public space in this in this in the ship. Now one of the main things that have garnered a lot of immediate attention is our new category of luxury suite on Explorer, and that is the Regent Suite. This plush two-bedroom, 3,875 square foot suite sits on the top of deck 14 and has 270 degree unobstructed views over the bow of the ship. And it also has a first in the industry an in-suite spa retreat where guests will have unlimited complimentary spa treatments from Canyon Ranch Spa in their suite. And it doesn't stop there. They'll also have a private car and driver in every port of call. So there truly is nothing like this in the industry today. And I personally believe it rivals any land-based offering as well. Now we also have two new specialty restaurants on Explorer, starting with Chartreuse. This is our classic French restaurant with a modern twist. <coughs> and we also have Pacific Rim, Pacific Rim is our Pan-Asian restaurant and it'll feature only on Explorer. We'll also have a first for the region brand on Explorer, the Culinary Arts Kitchen, which is pictured here. Here we have 18 individual cooking stations where guests will receive hands-on culinary instructions from our highly trained chefs on board. And to complement the Culinary Arts Kitchen, we also have gourmet explorer tours where guests will have um, one-of-a-kind epicurean adventures to some of the most famed Michelin star restaurants and also receive hands-on instructions from some of the premier chefs in Europe. <coughs> now we also have moved up to luxury in our Canyon Ranch Spa and moved it on to this out outdoor spa retreat with this amazing um, infinity pool right over the back of deck five. And we also have numerous entertainment options on board Explorer as well, starting with the two-tiered Constellation Theater, which is pictured here. And this is the heart of our exciting news today. But I want to take one quick step back and talk about uh, Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings. So a little bit over a year ago, we came together with Norwegian, and we have the three distinct brands, so Norwegian Cruise Lines, Oceana Cruises, and Regent Seven Seas Cruises. And so our goal was to share best practices across the three brands. And one of the areas that popped out immediately was the onboard entertainment. You know, for years, the Norwegian entertainment team has been pushing the boundaries of entertainment, and they are known for having the finest entertainment at sea. So this is a natural, to try to take advantage of, so I was immediately pushing to have the Norwegian entertainment team take over entertainment for both Ocean and Regent. So I was a kid in the candy store when they agreed to finally do it. And I gotta tell you, they blew my mind away with the initial four shows they've done for Explorer. Now fortunately, we have the man who heads up this amazing group here with us to share more details on those four shows. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you all to the Vice President of Entertainment and my new best friend, <laughs> Richard Ambrose. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Uh, yeah, I'm Rich Ambrose. I'm Vice President of Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings. <coughs> so I oversee Norwegian, Region 7 Seas, and then um, Oceana also. Um, but we're 
really super excited about the four shows that we're bringing to the uh, Regent Explorer. Uh, we think it's a, a it's a catalog that is going to appeal to the guest, um, and it's going to take. Region to the next level um, and also to the cruise industry to the next level of what we're going to be offering um, with, re, uh, with regards to the entertainment. Um, but it's not only in the theater, it's also what we're doing from the guest um, lecturing point of view with our Smithsonian um, uh, lecturers. Uh, so we have all that and then, uh, but let's get into uh, the shows. The first show we're going to be doing is a show called Paradis. It's a salute to the Parisian cabaret. It's as simple as that. It's like if you were going to go to uh, Moulin Rouge, if you're going to the Lido, um, it is our compilation of our salute to Paris and to, uh, to the Parisian Cabaret. It was created by Patricia Wilcox. Um, Patricia is uh, one of the leading choreographers on Broadway today with Motown. Um, she also <laughs> did Janis Joplin. Um, we got a little snippet here to just give you an example of what we're going to be bringing to our region. of Peggy Lee's songbook. It's going to be new arrangements, new concepting of the songs that she made famous and that she also wrote. So our guests are actually going to be entering the Waldorf Astoria in New York in 1950 um, and then subsequently taken through the journey um, through song and dance of uh, Peggy Lee. And if it's just, you know, fever, um, just a fantastic, uh, just a fantastic evening of, um, you know, some of the best music that was ever written in the American Songbook. Now we're going to go into our Broadway style. We believe that one of the things that we do at Norwegian Cruise Line is that we have a very strong relationship with Broadway. We, we actually are working with the, you know, leading producers today. So we're bringing this over to the Region Explorer also. We're doing a show called A Day in Hollywood. The original show on Broadway was called A Day in Hollywood, A Night in the Ukraine. Um, and basically, we're only going to be doing the first act because it's a perfect review of, uh, the, of the movies um, and of the classic golden era of the movies. Not just musicals, but also, you know, those uh, old film noir and just every kind of catalog of movie that you could think of we're going to be doing here. And basically what it is, is that um, you're invited into the Grauman's Chinese Theater in around the 1935-36 um, by the ushers of the Grauman's Chinese Theater. And these six crazy zany characters will lead you through the entire, basically, compilation of the movies from the 1920s all the way to the 1960s. 
Um, it won multiple Tony Awards, um, and we're really super excited to bring this to the Region Explorer because we believe that this fills the, the Broadway bucket. Um, and again, it also helps us to uh, you know, lead and keep on moving, inter moving entertainment um, on the Region brand. The last show we're going to be doing um, is called uh, My Revolution. It's a Burn the Floors, My Revolution. Again, in Norwegian, we have a very strong relationship with Burn the Floor. That's the, um, the ballroom dance group. Um, this is going to be specifically created by um, Peter Roby, who is the main choreographer, creative director for Burn the Floor for Region. Um, so, but we're going to be doing it as, it's going to be starting out as the, the night that the Beatles were introduced on the Ed Sullivan Show, and then subsequently taking us through the British invasion. And you're like going, okay, we've seen the 60s review. This is not going to be a 60s review because it's gonna be done through dance and ballroom dance only as Burn the Floor can do it. Um, so we're really super excited about this original concept. Um, but to give you an idea of what Burn the Floor, if you're, the, you're not familiar with Burn the Floor, we just have a little snippet here um, to give you an idea, so put My Revolution, Ed Sullivan, introduction of the Beatles with these individuals um, creating it. seen that before and trust me it will be it will blow your socks off it will it's gonna be amazing so besides these four shows again entertainment we have to raise the level at region from the quality point it's going to be the most luxurious ship so we have to have the best entertainment um, imaginable on a cruise uh, ship and we will um, we're also going to have four individual cabarets done by the talent of the um, production cast we will have a one uh, another group Cabaret, um, and then we'll also have the full complement of bands, a variety of entertainers, uh, and uh, guest artists, and guest lecturers. So if you want to be on the number one ship for entertainment, you want to be on the most luxurious ship in the world, and that's the Region Explorer. So thank you, and back to Jason. Thank you, Richard. Everyone at Region can't wait for these shows to debut on Explorer in July this year when the ship uh, is introduced. Fortunately, we're also going to be expanding the entertainment offerings on the rest of the Region fleet. Now, that will be in conjunction with our 125 million refurbishment program we announced earlier this year on all three of the existing vessels. So as we put the ships into dry dock, they'll come out of dry dock with the new entertainment offerings through Richard's group. And so we'll start with the first ship, which is the Seven Seas Navigator, which will enter dry dock in April. That will be followed by the Seven Seas Voyager, which will enter dry dock in October of this year. And finally, the Seven Seas Mariner, which will be in dry dock in the early spring of 2017. So once all three of these ships uh, leave dry dock, not only will they have the new entertainment features, but every single suite and public space will have been touched. So these ships will look better than the day they were originally delivered from the shipyard when we're done with these next dry docks. So I have a few sneak peek pictures of some of the public spaces on the Navigator. So the first one is Compass Rose. So this is our main dining room. Now, it's important to realize this ship is, was originally built in 1999. So as you can see, it's gonna look brand new from the dining room standpoint and all the other suites and public spaces. Then we have Galileo's Lounge, which Richard's group helped us make sure that we maximize the entertainment space in this lounge. And following one of my favorites, the Navigator Library, which we'll be introducing uh, when she uh, comes out of dry dock in April. So all these things combined with the introduction of Explorer, which will be the most luxurious ship ever built, the $125 million refurbishment program we have over the three ships, and the new entertainment offerings, this will be the most exciting 12-month period in Region's 25-year history coming up. Now, before I wrap up, I'd be remiss not to mention our sister brand, Oceana Cruises, 
Oceana will also be significantly upgrading the entertainment on board all of its ships. And we'll be coming out with additional details over the coming weeks of exactly what we'll be doing there. So I will open it up for questions when uh, me and Rich will be around here if you have any follow-up questions. But once again, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you all. So the only thing I'll add quickly is I do have the press release, which has got details on it. We'll have it at the door. Christina, if you can help me pass it out at the door.